Hey guys, Jaeger262 back with Armored Warfare this time, taking a break from the World of Tanks Marathon to continue to make videos in Armored Warfare. No special news, there's another event coming up soon. I'm guessing it'll probably be out later this week, given that the Battle Path event was not extended a second time, and so it will be ending tomorrow. Uh, they also fix some stuff to eventually add flags, which is the story I talked about the last time I was doing an Armored Warfare video. Those are not in the game yet. They'll be here soon. Basically, an update to put in a bunch of stuff, because that's how the game works. And it's now in the game's files, but it is not unlocked for players yet. And that's only That was the only big change this update, and then a couple of gameplay changes that were minor. So other than that, nothing to update. I'm just going to try to get into a global operations game in the ST1. But again, this is not a very popular mode. I don't know why. It's very popular amongst higher tiers because it gives you a lot more ability to make different tactical decisions instead of just going after one cap point and clashing in the middle like you do in random battles. It requires you to capture assets for anybody that hasn't played global operations you have multiple you have unlimited respawns and you have on top of three capture points a turn so essentially you have each team has to capture one or more points per stage and i think there's three stages depending on the map and whoever captures the most points who captures the most tickets, if you've played any of the Battlefield games, it's a lot like um, Conquest. And so, there's that aspect, but as well, you have different wild cards, which is what they're called. You can activate airstrikes, drones, um, ammo drops, helicopter support, and you have to capture those to help your team capture these other um, zones and after each stage we'll start with on most maps it starts with um, objective 1 2 and 3 and then it'll go to objective 4 5 and 6 and then 7 8 9 and I think it's 2,000 points per side if you get to 2,000 you win I don't remember anyway it's just a very large mode the maps are big they're the full size maps so not the ones that you see in PvE or PvP, and it's it's enjoyable. It's a dynamic experience. If I can't get into any of the games, I mean, it's only been two minutes, but if you can't get into one in the ST1, I'll probably just end up doing some tier 10 gameplay. And it's not really Chinese, but at least I can show you global ops. It's just fun. It's just different. And the reason I like it so much is mostly because of the diversity of roles. AFVs can be strictly AFVs in global operations. They don't have to rely on their teams to do too much or circumstance like in random battle. They can just do their job, and a lot of people do camp or spot very aggressively, depending on how your play style is. I mean, you can't camp aggressively, but well, that's not true. At tier 10, those AFEs are, and TDs are pretty monstrous, but you know, it's just fun. It's more fun in my opinion, and if you make a mistake, like I said, limited respawns, which is nice. Um, it's not nice once they start... Oh, alright, we're loading in. Excellent. So, you'll see what I mean. It's just, if you've never played it, I highly recommend that you do. If you don't have... It's open to tier 5, but yeah, as you can see, there's only 3 tier 8s in this game. It's usually popular just at high tiers. Usually on good volume days, you can get in in tier 5 or tier 7 vehicles, but it's unlikely. So if you don't have any high tier vehicles, and you're just not getting into global operations games, you know, at least you get to see what it's like. If you do have high tier vehicles but don't like the mode that much, try it out. I mean, it's it's interesting. It's different. I think it's better than random battles. 
and PvE just because it gives you the PvE mission aspect but instead of playing against bots you're actually playing against enemy players so it's just but you know we'll see this is not a good matchup <laughs> being bottom tier on a t in a matchup where half the team are tier 10s is not good even with this vehicle's great penetration value which is remind me of that again 530 wow that's actually not great okay well I don't know why I thought it was I thought it was in the, the 700 range oh well so yeah see there you go 3000 points my mistake and then you have these pillboxes which are AI so you do have AI enemies in the high tier games and you can see our team destroying them because if they don't they will kill you and so you get multiple capture points and none of them are on this middle island that's so weird I'm not actually gonna go over I'm just going to try to support my team's cap and Enemy follow this WPB Anders which Enemy is probably trying to play the same position three. yeah around the D6 line Oh wow, I already got spotted. By like, what? We have captured point two. Oh. Enemy has captured wow. point three. Full grenade out. Enemy has captured point one. Alright, so not a great game so far. <laughs> Walked into that trap. I didn't think that's what I mean. You can there are pretty aggressive scouts that PLO one just push straight up. It ended up getting killed, but because you have respawns, players in this game mode are generally more aggressive. They'll take more chances to secure more points. Which, if you don't like that idea or if that bothers you, you feel like maybe they're not going to play their best, which happens. Sometimes you'll have teams that just make huge suicide plays just because they know that they can get away with it. Alpha, secure this location so I, mean, I can get a drone up. Right, we are it's never bothered me that much so we can get and because of these repair circles I don't really care about the aggressive play either I mean I just got my because I'm the lower tier here usually it only does about 60% but I guess because I'm tier 8 and tier 10 game it allows me to regain all of my HP so that's nice Gonna try to snipe this T15. Alpha, get to the spot so we can get air support in here. So Alpha, yeah, this so that air up. support that he's talking about that's one of the wild cards, and so you can either call in drones to help spot enemy players. And so if your drone, obviously, if you set up a drone, you spot players, and people start damaging those players, you get the assist for that. You know, it's not like the AI does. So you get that damage, and then if you call in a bomber all those kills are yours and so that's kind of like the encouragement to go after those wild cards this thing's armor is so crazy good identify also PC target down there ain't got him though did not think that's gonna it's gonna work. All right, our team's capturing the bomber. I'm gonna try to support this B1 Draco. Nope, he's already down. Whipped that shot on the move. And so yeah, you'll see a bunch of the enemy team hopefully die. Yeah, see. So that took a total of six players off the, out of the game. <laughs> and so that's why you kind of want to use those bombers. Attention team, objectives have changed. All right. New points are marked on the map. So when the objectives change, that's the second stage I was talking about. And then after this one, of course, there's a third and final one. We're 
Capture coordinates now. Pretty Alpha. ridiculous. UAV inbound. Send target area. Copy on the marker. Get a hit on a target. Can't see anybody. Normally I would be more aggressive than this, but I'm low tier and I, I'm just not confident in this vehicle's ability to be aggressive. Target destroyed. Yeah, I have not done a lot of damage yet. There's that super rare Tier 9 American Tank Destroyer, the American Terminator. I need to hit him for 587, trying not to get caught by that thing. It has a great view range. It's not going to obviously spot me from all the way back here, but once I do get spotted, it can keep me locked down. So we can get our support in here. Identify target. Alpha PC. We are oh capturing point four. Yep, and there, there it is. The AGDS absolutely destroys me. Enemies captured point six. In the rear of the map, and then no biggie. I'm gonna spawn here and try to get the drone or the bomber on the island. We'll see. This isn't as exciting as the game usually is. It's just bad MM on my part, and so I don't really want to put myself out there and make these kinds of plays. We have captured point four. But as you can see, in the second stage, we've actually taken away a lot of the enemy team's points, so... <clears throat> oh, jeez. As you can see, an enemy is capturing the bomber. I'm not going to go for that. But we're winning now, is my point. And that's why I like it more than random battles. You, you have an opportunity to lose and then regain a foothold and maybe change. Sorry. I changed the outcome of the game halfway through. We're just really hoping that that Terminator isn't spawning. Area. I'm gonna put a drone up back here, back here, and just spot everybody at the base. UAV is on station and searching. Alpha, UAV has eyes on. Transmitting coordinates now. That didn't really help me, but I hope it helps my team. We have captured point six. Attention team, objectives have changed. New points are marked on the map. Enemies capturing point nine. I should have said that which is not necessarily while they do have certain time frames for each um, stage I don't know why I can say that um, the faster you cap or the more points one team gets over another team the stages will change slightly faster now that might not be just a fact it might just be how it's perceived but it definitely seems that way. Like once the one team starts dominating the other one, we'll change the stage to, you know, try and help out that other team. All right, I made that guy angry. Damn it, they hit hard. The engine's hit. Identify. Awful tank. We're hit. All right, I can't back up anymore Alpha. for some Here's reason. So I can get a drone up. There was nothing behind me, but okay. So that's it for me. I'm gonna change my spawn point and play the field a little bit. Oh my god. Enemies capturing point eight. <laughs> Holy god. <laughs> that guy just got completely crushed. That's hilarious. Um And that's another nice thing. Just like in random battle, when you spectate people after you die, you can still do that here like you just saw. And the reason that's nice is because, like, now I know that there's not only a T-15 Armada on 8, even though it's spotted, so it's not like, I didn't, I wasn't going to know that when I spawned, 
but I know that he's aggressive as hell. And I also got to see where most of my team is going, so I know where to support them once I do respawn. So, by spectating, you can get a lot of combat intelligence, or if you're like me and respawning is boring to you, it gives you some entertainment. That T-15 is hyper-aggressive. We got a hyper-aggressive tank destroyer on our hands. This, that no gun depression on this tank is going to kill me here. No pen. Not doing a lot of damage, but I mean, at least we're penetrating reliably. The Sabo rounds on this thing have a great shell velocity, which is what's allowing us to make all these hits. Oh, we killed his gunner. Nice. Ah. Uh, Whip that shot into the unmanned turret. Okay, I'm gonna try to go and get this bomber before anybody else does. So I can maybe show you guys some of that. And this game is relatively close. It's not crazy close, but it's something. Identify target. Oh god. Alpha. Incoming air strike detected. We've captured point eight. I bet you that point is coming from yeah, it is. Oh, jeez. And because I was looking at that plane, I got obliterated. You shouldn't do that if you do play global operations. Don't stare at the aircraft, but I wanted to show you guys what it looks like because I think it's absolutely cool how you get to see the bombs actually fall and predict where <laughs> the, the majority of the destruction is going to be. Uh, that was a B-2 Spirit Bomber, or the Stealth Bomber. They also have a B-1 Lancer. I think that's it, but there might be a Russian one. It depends on the map, what aircraft you get. And then, in some games, instead of having a bomber, they'll have a gunship, in which a C-130 Hercules gunship will actually come and just fly around shooting players for a long time, because they're really hard to kill. So kind of indefinitely, they have 7,000 hit points, and they're constantly circling the entire battlefield. So that is a huge asset. It's crazy powerful. I don't know why I can't. I don't know what that was. Alpha, incoming airstrike detected. Yep. I'm trying to get out of this airstrike. Oh, it's over there. That's a win for us. So pretty sure I didn't do great that game because I did stay in the back and only played a minor support role. But at least I get to show you guys a little bit of not only one, that the ST1 is capable of fighting tier 10s effectively, but also that Global Operations is just a cool game mode. I mean, I really enjoy it. 11,000 XP, 72,000 credits. Yeah, bottom of the team in experience and only slightly better than most people in damage. I only did 6,000 damage, not a lot. But yeah, so that's Global Operations. And this tank destroyer does a lot better, obviously, when it faces tier 8 and lower, but it's effective. It's why I'm using it to grind the rest of the Chinese line. So later I might do more Global Operations games if I can get into them. I might do some tier 10 gameplay. We'll see, but for now, at least, I got the one up there. So, thanks for watching that, and stay tuned. If you're not interested in the Chinese tanks, but do want to see more global operations, stay tuned through the rest of the video, because that's what I'll be doing for most of this morning. Alright, queuing for global operations again in the 9 p 163 Cornet EM, or just the Cornet EM, or even just a God's Tiger. It's essentially just a God's Tiger armored car with two Cornet missile launchers in the back, each with four missile tubes. And because of that, it is the fastest 
and most lightly armored AFZ by tier in armored warfare because essentially it is just a jeep that has no angles and no steel plating around it except for on the windshields which the VBL has for anybody that was thinking the VBL or the VBRs uh, it's basically just a truck with missiles on it and I love it it's fun the missiles are self-guided but it's better to guide them sometimes it's an interesting little vehicle to play it's not really a traditional type of AFV it'll be more like the VBL Ingua at tier 7 and I haven't played it since the buff but apparently I shouldn't say apparently they did do it I just haven't noticed it because I try to stay away from high tiers uh, they buffed the way ATGMs worked especially on high tier vehicles that rely heavily on them especially the Cornet which only has missiles and set missiles buffed to be more realistic and have their actual combat capabilities because Right now in the real world, they are the most advanced anti-tank guided missile system. How true that still is, you know, is impossible to tell, but when they were unveiled, they were the most advanced. And so, Armored Warfare has buffed them to kind of reflect that, and has given the Cornet the ability to use its special ability, which is having both missile launchers active at once, more effectively. Before, you just were able to fire eight missiles in sequence, and that was like the special perk now you can fire two missiles at once so essentially still eight missiles but four at a time so I'm just gonna try to do that I usually play with only one missile launcher operational but we'll see this also isn't a obviously a heavy AFV or IFV like the Rosomach or the Marder so you don't want to push forward you don't want a spot in this vehicle which is why it's not really traditional even though as I say that I am pushing forward and just because I want to be able to take this carrier right away on this map taking the carrier is paramount because it gives you control of the entire middle of the map with unlimited spotting capability we are capturing oh point two. lag Enemy is capturing point one. So I do want to get up there and kind of cap it. I don't know what this Leopard 2A is doing. Yeah, see the Sphinx is also coming up here. Enemy has captured point one. Lag. Lagged out, hit that guy, but at least we're on the cap circle. We have captured point two. Well, we get some points for that, and now I'm going to go snipe off of the carrier. One bad thing about having these missiles is they're fixed in position, so you do have to be facing your target. As you just saw, both missiles just hit that leopard. Only one penetrated, but oh well. Now that, I did not know that's how that worked. I thought you would just double click. So, cool feature, but now I'm afraid it's actually just going to end up wasting a missile. Because that only required one missile to get that kill. But, we'll see. Makes me, yeah. <laughs> so, it makes me hesitant to fire on low health vehicles. Because it'll just be a waste of one of my missiles. And you don't get a lot of missiles. The reason I said that is this thing has only 32 missiles in it. Yeah. Target locked. Too bad. Target's gone. Threat destroyed. See, now that I appreciate. So one of them didn't pen. Probably because of APS. But I didn't see the notification that it was APS. But if it was, one of the missiles Target will... Round destroyed. See? Round destroyed. So it will activate the enemy's APS and then the second missile will go through Target's lost. so that that I do enjoy a little bit and this the 32 um, missiles is the reason why I don't take this into PvP and why I don't like it in PvE so I don't really play the cornet a lot is because you run out of missiles very quickly so no matter what the damage potential is for the vehicle you're never gonna reach it 
that company capture the mark location but and we'll set up AT in global operations right you can reload ammunition or just kill yourself to get some spotting points and then you reload once you respawn so in this game mode I feel like the coronet can reach a little bit of its full potential if we can get through all this lag so that's just like the BBL or any other Jeep the smoke grenade launchers are transfixed to the hull of the vehicle my engines out and that means yeah I can't actually fire my missiles at anybody so that does suck the fact that they're locked into one place but it's no different than playing a tracked tank destroyer so you get used to it we're not gonna win this game well I actually can't call it that early on the lock excuse me I'm eating breakfast at the same time that I'm doing it but Well, I want to call this as a loss. I really don't know. Enemy has captured point two. Attention team, objectives have changed. New points are marked on the map. I don't think that Abrams is going to come out. We've marked a spot on the map. Capture it, and we'll send in a drone. We are capturing point I'm trying to spot the Abrams without getting destroyed. There he is. We are capturing point five. Yep, he's gone. I do. I have to say that I do like the ability to just fire two missiles at once, just in case the APS countermeasures are in place. Just in we case. I mean, you could always beat them with the cornet before this, but now you don't actually have to worry about. <clears throat> Man, this lag's killing me. Literally, he <laughs> just got hit by that all day. Um, <clears throat> now you don't have to worry about it, is what I was going to say. Before you would launch a missile, know it's not going to penetrate, and then try to quickly launch the other one after they got the warning. Now, since they're both near at the same time, they can't get the warning on time, and so they'll get hit right after activation of the APS. And well, people might not like that because they rely on their APS right to stay alive, and now this is just breaking lower. it. As someone who's launching the missiles, I enjoy it very much. Enemy spotted. Transmitting coordinates. All right, trying to cap five without getting spotted is going to be hard. But we have help. All right. Trying to get behind some we enemies. Usually, I just snipe other cornets with this thing, which is, you know, Black company, I guess the mark me and we'll and set up AT pillboxes right away. All right. We detected a hostile drone. The enemy's drone detected us. Destroy it. Identify. Where did that guy even come from? Well, I just got rammed to death by that leopard. Um, yeah, let's spawn there. 
try to deal with some of these MBTs. I don't know who is pinging the map so much, but it is annoying. As if we don't know there's a bunch of TDs over there, right? Like, Ready when you are. AT team has been deployed. Enemy has captured point four. Black Company, airstrike is ready. Capture the mark location, and, and we'll lay down. We're able to destroy his Attention gun. Team objectives have changed. New points are marked on the map. Black Company, fall back. Enemy capturing point seven. We're capturing point eight. We're capturing <sighs> point six. Having <coughs> fucking four missiles not penetrate that armada, that is bullshit, nah. Enemies capturing point nine. Ah, uh, man. When your missiles don't penetrate, even for like the slightest ridiculousness, it hurts so much in the corner, because again, you have so little. Enemies captured point There's the seven. enemy cornet. Or one of the enemy cornets. Strike yeah, see, we're winning, and I was going to call it as a loss, so... That's good. I know that's good. Target confirmed. Strike inbound. I'm gonna try to find. Bombers do do friendly, f again, for another tip for anybody who doesn't play global operations a lot, bombers do do friendly fire, so all bombers, just like in the real world, are super dangerous. If you do not want to be on the wrong end of one. Ready. Capture the mark location and we'll rain hell on them. Yeah, the Wilk moved way back. Gonna go down there. Oh my god. Oh, hey, no fall damage. I'll take that. Enemies captured point eight. Strike ready on your command. Blackbird, we need an airstrike. Really bad at driving in this game. Good to go. I, I mean, I have a, I have trouble controlling the cornet. Damn, got him! <laughs> Destroy that cornet with one salvo. How is it destroying both rounds? What is that about? Stupid Polish medium tank, light tank, sorry, stupid Polish light tank. I don't know how it destroyed two rounds twice. I don't know what kind of APS that thing is using, but it doesn't make any sense. <clears throat> anyway, I still love the cornet. Not doing a lot of damage, so... I have to disagree with the reports that they buff these missiles. They're still only penetrating 15% of the time, so We've a spot on the they're map. not Capture buffed. And we'll send in a... No matter what anybody says, the cornet's still not performing as much as it should. And at the same time, I realize that, you know, if it performed too well, obviously then it would become OP, but this vehicle's pretty underwhelming right now, at the moment. Very underwhelming to play. Even in global operations where it thrives, they need to have better penetration value. Yeah, the penetration of 1300 millimeters is a straight up lie. <laughs> That's just not true. I mean, it's obviously it's true. It just refers to 1300 millimeters of flat armor. Um, not ER. It doesn't account for ERA or angles. You know, none of the values of penetration 
account for that, in case you wanted to know. So I'm not trying to say that Armored Warfare is lying, they're not, it does get 1300 millimeters, it's great, but I mean, it needs more effective penetration, like the real missiles have. Which is what I meant and why it can become OP, because once it gets the real world effective penetration, then that 1300 millimeters applies to all surfaces of a tank. Um, but that's why this is a game, and not the real world, because that would be absolutely ridiculous, and I would hate playing against them. I just wish it would get more leeway with these missiles, I guess, to go through those kinds of targets. But other than that, I still love it. Great vehicle. Another good global operations game. Another win. So, yeah. Um... Don't know if I'll make any more global operations videos. I might just go back to doing some of the Chinese tanks at, in random battles, but we'll see. We'll see. Alright, decided to do another global operations game. It's because I don't really get into this mode a lot. And I could always make random battle videos at any other point of the day. And so, just to round out some interesting vehicles. Again, the second tier 10 from the Oscar Faraday line, the Cornet being the first, is this K21 XC8. Which is the Belgian XC8 chassis, which you'll, er, not chassis, sorry, turret, which you'll recognize from the Wilk tank destroyer. This time put onto the K21 South Korean BMP chassis. Now this is like the Wilk, a glass cannon. It plays the same, doesn't get hash, but it does get the amazing heat rounds that the other vehicle does. And better spotting abilities, but you can't actually use them any more than the Wilk can. So I'm just going to be sniping from the back in this vehicle. It's basically a very fast, very active tank destroyer. Capturing point one. With just amazing gun handling. I feel bad for that cornet. <laughs> Not stand a chance. It gets a, it gets 690 millimeters of penetration with the Sabo rounds, and then I think a crazy 800 with these. Yeah, 800 with heat. Now obviously the heat ones do less damage to heavily armored targets, but Enemy has captured point two. with that kind of penetration, who cares? <laughs> right? And as you'll Enemy notice, its reload, just like the Wilk, is incredibly fast. So this vehicle, I'm not particularly fond of light tanks does make me want to play the tank destroyer better because I do like the Rosomach chassis, I do like wheeled vehicles more, especially in the tank destroying role. Um, but this gun is very good. Hopefully he'll back up just enough. Ugh, it's not a missile, it's a round, you fool. Stupid Mercury with that stupid APS. So we're gonna get that shot though. Ammo up. I'm not gonna penetrate him. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean it's it's an okay vehicle. I like it enough. Hard points located. Take over the spot and we'll get some ATT. The light tanks, there. I like it a lot better than the American line. After the stingray that <laughs> The Buford and the Thunderbolt, well, I don't know about the Thunderbolt for sure, but the Buford's not great. And the PLO-1 I've never played, but that's definitely a more active white tank. Hard points located. Take over the spot and we'll get some AT teams in there. Oh my god, round destroyed. And it gets pretty good gun depression. 
in a game used <laughs> where especially in the real world it's a game about modern tanks but I was using that as a segue to in the real world a lot of modern tanks don't have gun depression because that's no longer priority they have countermeasures to deal with that and the battlefields have changed significantly so it's mostly about elevation for buildings and insurgents um, but this vehicle has amazing depression despite that just that real world fact uh, that shows up in this game a lot as you'll see I think the vehicles that have the most depression being the challengers or like things like the Abrams and even then it's only I think six or eight degrees so for this thing to have as much penetration as it does is crazy good Oh, my bad. <laughs> Just Alpha, AT threat is coming from those hard points. Who, who spotted me? They nailed it. Oh. Oh god. Team objectives have changed. How did he spot me? Enemy is capturing point five. Oh. We are oh, capturing wow. point four. He didn't spot me. See, that's what I mean. In global operations, you gotta pay attention to the environment. Like, that's the only way you'll survive. And I did not pay attention to the pillboxes. So, two pillboxes spawned behind me and the other K21. And while the pillboxes killed him and didn't kill me, they did spot me long enough for the enemy Abrams to kill me. We have captured point four. Enemies captured, point five. You know, it sucks a little bit when you get killed by, or because of AI. At least I didn't get killed by it, you know. But, you know, you have to be careful in this game mode. Something that I take for granted, because it happens... <laughs> it doesn't happen that often. Um, which is why, if you never played it, now that you know that this happened, it's like a thing. You may think it's like all terrible, but it's... It's not, not really. I mean, many people put up ATT, AT teams, which are what the pillboxes are called on their wild card designation, and they don't really do anything. But also, as you can see right now, we're just punishing this whole cap circle. And because we're a light tank, we get that great camouflage factor, and because the pillboxes have been destroyed. We're not getting spotted. Alpha. Hostile UAV detected in your area. Alpha. Enemy UAV has eyes on. Take it out. I might switch to heat and see if I can get to the challenger Alpha, that way. Oh, see that's gonna spot Enemy us. That drone. Roger, send it. So the enemy K-21 there. Let me see if I can get a shell into. Nope. Enemy UAV has eyes on. I'll try. Okay, we're losing now, which I didn't know. Enemies capturing point six. We're capturing point eight. Right. Got through the alt but only did 92 damage because it's heat. See, I wouldn't recommend using heat rounds against heavily armored targets, even though you do get that 800 millimeters of penetration. Enemies captured point six. We've captured it's better to nine. use Sabo. Strike aircraft on station. Give me something to hit. Identify. Copy, standing by. Alpha, strike inbound. We have captured point seven. Copy, loud and clear. Fast moving inbound. Enter there. Fast moving inbound. Alpha, get to the spot so we can get our support in here. Wow, what an amazing airstrike. I glad I got that on film. But yeah, we little things like eight. that just make this game mode, in my opinion, so cool. And. <laughs> Not really immersive, because again, this isn't like how 
tank combat works, but it definitely makes it feel like a more modern conflict. Especially when you get things like the helicopters, which I absolutely detest, but... Come on, where is he? Hard points located. Take over the spot and we'll get some Wow, hit him for 820. Strike aircraft on station. Hit him for 773. Wow, those are two heavy hits there. Alpha. Incoming airstrip detected. Oh shit, you see the bomber? Both terrorizing this this challenger. I feel bad for this challenger. He's got two K21s abusing him. Oh, that a lot. And he's got so much, <laughs> so many hit points. He could just take that. That was hilarious. Look, just a bunch of lightly armored vehicles. Sworn that challenger. That's great. That's the kind of teamwork I can get behind. No Damn. You can see that it's a um, an effective combat eight. vehicle. I enjoy it quite a bit. I have never actually played it in global operations though, so I didn't know it could be this fun. Alpha, threat is coming from those hard points. Trying to get some more damage in here towards the end. Oh, there's that challenger and he's angry. Oh god. <laughs> wow! I can't believe we pen we not penetrated, but we bounced that shell. That's gotta suck when you're using an 140 millimeter cannon and something that has the frontal armor of like 30 millimeters bounces it, but I'll take it. I'll take that RNG win. So 85,000 credits, 19,000 experience. Not bad. Um, don't do that great in terms of experience, but we are in the top two, four, six. We're in the top six for damage dealt. So this is actually a pretty decent light tank. It's quite enjoyable to play. I highly recommend playing Global Operations at any tier. I was just using tier 10s because, like I said, it's the most popular tier in that game mode, and also it's the most popular game mode in that tier. I mean, it goes hand in hand, obviously. And so it's just easier to get games. But thank you so much for watching. Throw up a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for more Armored Warper videos. I'm going to continue with the Chinese gameplay because they are, again, the branch of the month and just try to get through that and grind to the Type 99 or I might do more PvP and more vehicle showcases depending on what you guys want to see just throw up a comment, comment any vehicles you want to see reviewed or played or any type of game modes that you would particu you're particularly interested in anyway, see you next time